In this video, I'll show you the first steps to extending your screen to a second screen. Um, to do that, you'll start in System Preferences, and then you're going to look for the Displays icon. And in this view, really, I only wanted to point out um, what this looked like before I plugged the monitor in. Um, my second screen is going to be a monitor, um, but um, there will be an additional tab here. So we have Display, Color, and Night Shift. Um, and we rarely need to use any of these. Um, but once I plug my second screen in, you will see a fourth tab that appears here called Arrangement and that's the one where we'll focus. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my second screen now. And now that my second screen is plugged in, you can see that I now have this fourth tab called Arrangement, and that it's showing a blue rectangle. If I get close, you may be able to see that there's actually two rectangles, one right behind the other. And that's because I have this checkbox marked mirror displays. And mirroring displays is how teachers typically teach their classes. Um, that just means that the same thing that you see on your laptop is also appearing on the second screen, which is the projector. So if I back away a little bit now, you can see that I have now two screens. One is my laptop, and one is the screen that I just plugged in, which is a bigger monitor, um, but could also just as easily be a projector. Um, so I have my two screens, and of course you can tell that they are identical. They are mirroring each other. And that's what, again, the two blue rectangles are representing. So when um, you're extending your desktop, you do not want to mirror. Um, so I'm going to uncheck that box. And you see the, um, the screens always kind of go black and then come back up as they, um, as they learn their new setup. And so you also see that instead of the rectangles being stacked one in front of the other. Now they are side by side. And then you can also see that they have different windows, different content on each monitor or each um, screen. Um, now, coincidentally, these uh, monitors, you can see when I click on one of them, I can actually move these rectangles around and it knows that I'm clicking on the laptop. And so that red um, outline appears. Um, so I can move this anywhere that the monitor might be resting. I can also move it to the other side if um, the computer is just guessing where that monitor is or where the second screen is. Um, it doesn't actually know, even though it happened to get it right in this instance. Um, so you can move it to either side. So depending on where you're sitting in the room and where your second screen is, sometimes I actually, actually drop my laptop down under my bigger monitor, and then I have to move the mouse up and down in order to um, to go from screen to screen. But I'm going to put it back over here where the monitor actually sits. And so what this means, the um, MacBook screen is here, the smaller one. And of course, the larger monitor is off to the left. And when I move the mouse, I can move the mouse from this monitor now across onto my laptop screen. Right? I can grab this window and I can drag it back on to the bigger screen. And you could do this exact same thing with your projector. If you uncheck this mirror displays box, you're now having an extended display setup. And anything that you have in one display, you can move over to the other display. It gets a little bit tricky if you ever go into full screen mode. So I just sent this window into full screen mode. And now, of course, I can't drag it. So if you ever find that's the case, you just have to come out of full screen mode, um, which you can do with this uh, green button here. So you have to um, go up to the very top of the screen and hit that green button. But once you come out of full screen mode, now I can drag this window straight over so that it's on the other screen. And that's really all extended display is. From here, the final step is really just making sure that you can manipulate the windows in the way that you want. And that can get tricky, especially with programs like Zoom. So I have um, just started my Zoom, and I have four or five um, other attendees in my Zoom right now. And um, you can see that um, I'm on my MacBook, 
and I'm extending my desktop over to a second screen, which in this case is just my bigger monitor, but in your case might be your projector. And so what's on my version of the projector is showing the content that I'm sharing from my iPad. So this is a Google slideshow that I'm sharing from my iPad as I teach my class, but on my projector, I want my students in the room to see it as well. So this is um, the projection that my students are seeing. And this monitor over here on my MacBook is really kind of mine to do whatever I want with. Um, I do not need this webcam. This is one of my webcams over on the right. Um, I don't necessarily need to project that. So what I'm going to show you is how you can pop this out and only project the slideshow or whatever is on your iPad um, to the entire class. And that happens with a few key elements. One of those key elements is under view options. So if I go into view options, which is way, sorry, as my chair creaks, um, view options is way up here. If I click on it, I really just want to draw your attention to one particular um, checkbox, which is side by side mode. Side by side mode is what's controlling um, this picture of the webcams and this picture of my shared iPad screen. And one of the first things I want to do is just uncheck that box. So now you can see this is what I wanted. This webcam now comes out as a floating window. And I can now drag that window across onto my MacBook. And now what the students in the room are seeing on the projector is just the content from my iPad. Sometimes this, this movement, this um, pop-out window is easy, and sometimes you have to mess around with one other factor that I'm going to show you, which is way up here in the left corner. And that is, um, I mentioned this before, that Zoom always starts in full screen mode. And sometimes you do have to take Zoom out of full screen mode, which just means you have to go up to the very top and hit that green button to bring it out of full screen mode. Um, in this case, I didn't need to do that. Um, you can see that the webcams actually jumped back into the window, which is what I don't want. So I'm actually going to go back into full screen mode by hitting this green circle. So that same green circle puts you into full screen mode and takes you out of full screen mode. You may run into an instance where you need to use that green button. Um, so I've already turned off side by side mode. You can tell that is unchecked. You can also tell because my webcams are over on the right side of the screen. And finally, I'm going to do one more thing, which is down in the bottom bar here, I want to bring my chat out as well. So I now have my chat window, and now it happened to pop in on my other monitor. But of course, if it didn't, if it had popped up over here, I simply would have dragged it over onto this side anyway. Now that I'm here, I'm going to show you how I like to set up this second monitor, which is uh, my laptop. Um, I like to just bring this chat box way up to the top right corner, and then I can extend it by pulling the left corner all the way to the bottom of the screen. And now any messages that go in here, I at least have a, a better chance of seeing them um, if they pop up over here a little bit bigger than if all I'm looking for is that little number to pop up next to the chat bubble. I'm never going to notice that, but I might notice if the text pops over here. Um, you might notice that the text on my um, chat is a little bit bigger than most. You can do that on your MacBook by simply clicking into the window and holding down Command and then hitting the plus symbol. So mine is already as big as it can get, but I can show you what it looks like by the default. It is unreadable and almost unseeable. <laughs> so I Command plus to go as big as it'll go, which again is just barely big enough for me to be able to notice, um, although I might have to walk over to the laptop to actually read it. And finally, um, even though I have one webcam, I don't want just one webcam in my view. I want all the webcams. So I'm going to hit, um, there are these three icons, and I'm going to hit what I have now is the biggest one, which extends the, the webcams at least into this tiled view. It's not ideal because what I really want is that grid view, right? That's, that's what I'm aiming for. I want to be able to basically do the same thing with this window, 
that I did with the chat. I want to be able to fill this empty space. So I want to be able to put it here and then drag one of the corners and extend it all the way across to fill this box. The reason I can't do that right now is that option only becomes available when you have more than six people in your Zoom. I should say more than six webcams in your Zoom. Um, so right now, because I only have three or four, I don't get that fourth button that will be right here. You guys might see it um, on your screen all the time. Right here, there will be a grid icon. And when that grid icon's there, you can click on it and it will start off very small, but you can, again, you can drag the corners. If you go down to one of the bottom corners, you can drag it so that it extends all the way to fill this square and you'll be able to see all of your students in that square in grid view for the webcams. And then you have your laptop set up just the way you want it and you'll have your content displaying on the projector that's coming in from your iPad. I know that's a lot. Um, of course, email me if you have questions and good luck.